Now let's talk about some very fundamental issues in Medina. When the Prophet ﷺ arrives in Medina and he chooses that spot and he wants to now construct a mosque in Medina, a man comes to the Prophet just as he had entered Medina and he challenges the Prophet. That man is Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, the leader of the hypocrites later. Abdullah ibn Ubay felt threatened by the presence of the Prophet. Why? Because the Aws and Khazraj, the main two tribes in Medina, they were fighting for so long. Just recently, they decided to, do, to choose Abdullah ibn Ubay to be their chief and leader. Then months after that, they went to Mecca and they made an allegiance with the Prophet ﷺ, inviting him to come. So effectively, they changed their mind about Abdullah ibn Ubay. No, we don't want you as the leader. Rasulullah ﷺ will be our leader. So when the Prophet entered Medina and Abdullah ibn Ubay saw those masses cheering the Prophet, receiving the Prophet, supporting the Prophet, he grew very jealous of the Prophet. He saw the Prophet is taking his own position. So from that first minute, he showed enmity to the Prophet What did he say to the Prophet? When he met the Prophet, he told him, go, go to the people who have deceived you and don't deceive us here. So he asked the Prophet to leave. Now Sa'd ibn Ubadah, he was also one of the tribal leaders in Medina. He, find, he found this unacceptable. So he told him, Ya Rasulullah, don't listen to him. Abdullah ibn Ubay does not represent us. He was about to become our chief, but things changed. He does not represent us. You are welcome to stay here. We shall support you as much as we can. Don't listen to this man. He's got a grudge in his heart and he doesn't want you to be here. But we, the people of Medina, we want you to be here. This guy, Abdullah ibn Ubay, he created so many headaches for the Prophet Later on, he became the leader of the hypocrites in Medina. He had an army of hypocrites with him. Many verses in the Holy Quran, many chapters in the Holy Quran actually were revealed to attack him, his ideas, and also the hypocrisy that he and many other hypocrites harbored in the city of Medina. For instance, we find that after the battle of uh, Bani al-Mustalaq, when the Prophet came back from that battle, Abdullah ibn Ubay, he told Muslims or many of his followers, many of the hypocrites, he says, do not give money and assistance to the Muslims. Why? Because we want them to be weak, so we drive them out of Medina. And they said the following phrase, which Surat Al-Munafiqun quotes, يَقُولُونَ لَإِنْ رَجَعْنَا إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ لَيُخْرِجَنَّ الْأَعَزُّ مِنْهَا الْأَذَلْ يَقُولُونَ لَإِنْ رَجَعْنَا إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ لَيُخْرِجَنَّ الْأَعَزُّ مِنْهَا الْأَذَلْ You know what he said? He said, let's weaken the Muslims, let's weaken the Prophet, so that when we go back to Medina, we have the Izzah and the power and we'll drive the weak ones out, these Muslims, you know, the believers, we'll drive them out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to him in the Holy Quran. Allah says, I have the power. Say all the powers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You think you can stop the Prophet? So this guy was really a big, big headache. The leader of the hypocrites. In fact, you know what he did at Uhud? We shall see at Uhud, he had 300 people with him, supporting him. His party, the hypocrite party. At the battle of Uhud, suddenly he withdrew from the army of the Prophet. Imagine 300 people suddenly abandoning you. That's one reason why the Muslims, um, they suffered heavy casualties at Uhud. One was they disobeyed the Prophet as we shall see. Number two was this guy. He played a very evil scheme. He was the leader of hypocrites in Medina. Now you know what's very important about Abdullah ibn Ubay? There is something extremely important about Abdullah ibn Ubay. Abdullah ibn Ubay was one of those Muslims in Medina who participated in Bay'at al 
Ridwan or Bay'at al-Shajara. In the sixth year of the Hijrah, after Hudaybiyah, the Muslims came to pledge allegiance to the Prophet. Now under pressure he had to pledge allegiance because the Prophet now became strong and Muslims supported him, every household in Medina supported him. He could no longer openly fight the Prophet. So he's like, let me go and pledge allegiance. Hypocrite, he's like, let me destroy Islam from within. Why is this significant? Uh, there is a very important verse in Surah Al-Fatih, verse 18, which you will find other schools of thought citing this verse to state that all the Sahaba, Allah was pleased with them and they're good. What does Allah say in Surah Al-Fatih, verse 18? لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ Allah says in the Holy Quran, Allah has been pleased with the mu'mineen, the believers, when they gave bay'ah to you under the tree. This is called bay'at al-Ridwan or bay'at al-Shajara, has two names. Bay'at al-Ridwan because Allah radiya anhum, He became satisfied with them, or the Shajara because it happened under a tree. This is one of those verses that is commonly cited to state, see, the Quran is witnessing the Sahaba were all good. All those who participated in that bay'ah, Allah became pleased with them. So why do you consider them, uh, to consider some of them to have deviated? Why don't you accept all of them as good people when the Quran is saying Allah was pleased with them? So we pose the following question. Abdullah ibn Ubay, according to Sunni and Shia, was one of those people who was present at this incident. He was under the tree, giving the bay'ah to the Prophet And Sunni schools of thought agree that he was the leader of hypocrites, he was not a believer, he deviated and his fate was hell. So solve this dilemma for me. The verse says Allah was pleased with all of them, supposedly. But then you have Abdullah ibn Ubay whom they acknowledge and admit was a hypocrite. So what do you do with this verse? <laughs> Allah knows what's in their hearts, then He sent down the sakina, the tranquility on them. This bay'ah is conditional. First of all, what is one word in the very beginning of the verse that tells us this bay'ah did not include all the companions, it included some of them? Exactly. Did Allah say, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الصَّحَابَةِ is, is that what the verse states? No. It says, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah was pleased with the believers. So any companion who was truly a believer, yes, Allah was satisfied with him. But is this verse stating all companions were believers? No. That's not what it's saying. And the proof is someone like Abdullah ibn Ubay. If you say that the verse is stating <coughs> all the companions were believers, then how do you solve this dilemma of Abdullah ibn Ubay? He participated for sure, so he should be included in the verse, yet they acknowledge he died as a hypocrite. And he was an enemy to the Prophet And his fate was hell. So what do we do with a person like that? That's clear evidence that the verse is not talking about all companions. It's talking about those who are believers. And that's exactly what we say. We in the school of Ahlul Bayt, we say companions are two, two categories. One was were true believers and the others were not. They were not true believers. Maybe they believed some time in their life, then they changed or they were hypocrites. And the Quran talks about many, many hypocrites in Medina. So he died at the he died during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa and the Prophet explained to his companions that he died as a disbeliever. See, he never openly fought the Prophet like with an army because the Prophet was too strong in Medina. That's not something he could consider. So what he did, he would always come up with conspiracies, trying to conspire with others, trying to 
mobilize some people to abandon the Prophet, that's what he would do in Medina really. But then in the end, he never gained victory and he died during the time of the Prophet Yeah, so he died before the Prophet and he never, you know, achieved his victory of driving the Prophet, prophet out of Medina. Now this issue of hypocrites is something that we should examine in Mecca as well. We know the Prophet in Medina, his daily headache was with hypocrites. And the Quran is filled with references. You've got an entire chapter called Al Munafiqun. You've got many verses in Surah At Tawbah that says you're surrounded with hypocrites. Surrounded with hypocrites. You know what's interesting about other schools of thought? During the time of the Prophet, there were many hypocrites, as the Quran states. The minute the Prophet passes away, they instantly become all good. Yani just instantaneously, they flip 180 degrees those hypocrites and they become believers. Isn't it so? Because they say their companions, they're all just. They're all just. The, what happened to those hypocrites? What happened to them? Where did they go? Did the ground swallow them or what happened to them? And what happened to those verses? You know, a hypocrite does not become a believer overnight. Especially when the Quran attacks them so much. And Allah says they are in the lowest levels of hell. So what's going on over here? In fact, in fact, those who state all the companions became good after the Prophet, that is an insult to the Prophet. You know why? Analyze a statement like that. That means the only barrier in their lifetime from becoming believers was the presence of the Prophet himself. Because the minute the Prophet leaves, they all become good. So the only thing that was stopping them from becoming believers was the Prophet himself. The Prophet who's Rahman al-Alameen, who's a source of guidance, is now the reason why they're not believing. Can you accept that? Really that's what, what it boils down to. As long as the Prophet was present, there were hypocrites. The minute he leaves, he's out of the picture, Allahu Akbar, they become so good and so just and we should follow all of them and accept all of them as just companions. So that means the presence, the blessed presence of the Prophet was a barrier to their guidance. Who can accept that? How can a Muslim accept that? The Quran says the Prophet is a source of guidance and what these guys state, no, bil'aq, the exact opposite. The Prophet's presence was a barrier from having these munafiqeen becoming good people and joining the religion of Islam with a pure heart. Because the minute he leaves, somehow they become good. So the only thing that changed was the absence of the Prophet. So th the problem was his presence then. Can we accept that? What happened to those hypocrites?